sixth grade, module six, lesson 11, problem set. Number one, two classes took the same mathematics test. Summary measures from the two classes are listed below. A, suppose that you received the highest score in your class. Which score would have been higher if you were in class A or class B? Explain your reasoning. So class A here has a mean of 78. They both have a mean of 78, but a MAD, a mean absolute deviation of two. So nothing really differed very far from the mean. So everything was kind of within, um, between like 76 and 80 around there. Class B had a mean of 78 also, but the MAD is 10. So there's a lot of variability. So a lot of things ranging from a 68 all the way to an 88 and probably a little bit higher. So what would your score have, would your score have been higher if you were in class A or B if you received the highest score in your class? Well, your score would be higher if you were in class B because the, the deviation is a lot greater, so the scores are going to go up a lot higher. So let's say class B. Because the MAD is higher, which means there is much more, much greater variability. B, suppose that your score was below the mean score. In which class would you prefer to have been? So if here we've got a MAD of 10, I mean, if you go down 10 here, you could have a low score of around 68. And here the MAD's 2, so your low score would only be around 76. So I would prefer to be in class B, or sorry, class A, because I'm going to have I'm going to have a higher score than I would in class B. Let's say class B, or sorry, class A, because the variability is much lower. So my score would have been higher than in class B. It's so basically the less variability that's going to give me a better score if we're talking lower. Number two, each or eight of each of two varieties of tomato plants, love them and wonderful, are grown under the same conditions. The number of tomatoes produced from each plant of each variety are shown below. So we have love them and wonderful, and it is the different varieties, the number of tomatoes produced. So these are the number of tomatoes produced from each plant. There are eight plants of each variety. Draw dot plots to help you decide which variety is more productive. Okay, so we have Love em, Wonderful. So Love em ranges from 27, I think is the lowest, to 31 being the highest. And Wonderful, I see all the way down to 20 and up to 51. So let's go from like 20 to 55, and I'm gonna count by tens. or sorry, tw by facts, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 55. Let's make that one, love them. And this would be number of tomatoes. Now let's do wonderful. We started at 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, number of 
tomatoes. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot. Love them. We had 27. We had a 29. We have another 27. A 28. A 31. Another 27. 28 and 27. So there's our love them plot. They're all pretty, um, pretty close together, not very scattered out. And wonderful, we have 31, 20, so 31, 20, 25, 50, 32, another 25, 22, and 51. So there are our dot plots. Calculate the mean number of tomatoes produced for each variety. Which one produces more tomatoes on average? So to do that, we need to add these together. And then we're going to divide by 8, because that's how many tomato plants we have. So. start with love them. We have 27 plus 29 plus 27 plus 28 plus 31 plus 27 plus 28 plus 27. So we got 224 divided by 8. Tomato plants is 28. I mean it was, what was it, 224? divided by eight was 28. So that is the mean. Let's do the mean for wonderful. Add them all together, divide by eight. 31 plus 20 plus 25 plus 50 plus 32 plus 25 plus 22 plus 51 is 256. Divided by eight is 32. So the mean here is 32. So it's 256 divided by 8 equals 32. And you can write that out. It says calculate the mean number. Which one produces more tomatoes on average? So let's say love them. was 28, wonderful, it's 32, so uh, wonderful produces more on average. C. If you want to be able to accurately predict the number of tomatoes a plant is going to produce, which variety should you choose? The one with the smaller mad or the one with the larger mad? Explain your reasoning. So if you're trying to accurately predict which one, how much something is going to produce, do you want something with a small mad or a larger mad? So a lot of variability or a little bit of variability? If you're trying to accurate, so we want to be accurate, then we want little variability. So you want the one with the smaller mad to, um, because that's going to be the most accurate depiction of what you're actually going to come out with. So let's say, love them produces, so they produce fewer tomatoes. On average, 28 right? But they are far more consistent. That's not how you spell consistent. It's the wrong color. It's okay. Far more consistent. So they have a lower mat, which we can see from our chart here. 
right? There's not much variability here at all. We just, we're going between like 26 and 31. Here, we're stretching all the way from 20 to 51. So if you get one of those tomato plants, you don't know if you're gonna be producing 20 or 50. It's kind of a luck of the draw there. Whereas this one, it's much more accurate. You gotta know what you're gonna get when you purchase it. That's why I would choose that one, just cause I know um, what you're gonna get. So let's say based on the data, data sets or the dot plots, choosing love them will give you Maybe numbers in the high 20s very consistently. But the number from Wonderful can vary greatly. from the low 20s to 50. So if you want accurate, you gotta go with Love Them.